Hello, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. This is the first one of the day in the world. Hello. Hey guys. How are you? I'm uh I'm I'm okay. I'm I'm a guy, you know? I'm just a guy in uh Mrs. Pac Man's world, you know? Break that one down. But uh my name is Bugs Buggy. I'm the geyser. You are the geezers. So this is the second time I've done the full circle podcast by myself. And the first one I kinda I kinda dove into my brain a little bit, you know? I explained a little little couple things, but I don't really know what the fuck I'm doing, you know? Um, the only thing that I can bring up is that I'm a musician and there are very selfish reasons that I make music. Now, the unselfish reasons, first being, I want to connect with people. I want to talk to people. I want people to feel how I feel, you know? That's why I make music, because... Otherwise, I think how I feel a lot would be taken out on other people. So maybe that's why I'm such a nice person. And maybe I'm tooting my own horn there. Shout out to my dad's last name. But if you listen to the first one by myself, then I think I go into depth of that a little bit. Why I kind of slowed down musically right now. And I mean right now because I did that first one yesterday. And I just... I think I'm in a spot where I want to connect with people other in other ways. Meaning, I have a lot of music that I haven't released. And I think about 95% of my music I've ever made and have recorded is never going to get released. And that's the same thing for every single musician and band. And that's a very sad thing, a realization that I just came across. And I was actually sitting, I was just recording a song. And I realized when I sat back and listened to it, I just didn't feel like it. Like, I, not that I didn't feel it. I felt what I was writing, like it was good, but I just didn't feel like it. I just feel like talking right now. And musicians are kind of thrown into this wind up the back of the monkey so they can clap their hands and do their job. And anything else that a musician says is blasphemy. But I think, like I said, bringing it back to the main reason I make music is to connect with people. The selfish reasons are that I can... I can actually be me with no regard. It's kind of a thing the comedians have. It's like when the comedian's doing a bit on stage, it's comedy, so their armor is comedy. You know, my armor is music and the experiences I went through. But what I realized is that a lot of people don't listen to music, and even if I make every single genre of music that's ever been made, if I make like stellar stuff of that genre, it's still not going to reach certain people that it would if I was just doing what I'm doing right now, just talking. So I think this is more of like a like a thing of just wanting me alone making sure people knew what my intentions, what my brain is and who I am, you know? Because then otherwise, all you have to go off is my music. And when I think about that, I make that how I feel in that moment, you know. So you could bundle up a couple songs together and put that as me as a person. But that's not me at all times, you know. And like I said, that that is why I make a lot of music, a lot of different vibes. Because I don't want to be put in a box as a musician. And that's the same thing as a person. Like... Stereotypes are real as far as certain things go. We don't have to get into details, but like, for instance, a 300-pound guy who throws a jab the right way 
versus a 100-pound guy who throws a jab the white way, that jab's going to feel a little different to the person getting hit. You know what I mean? Keep in mind that 300-pound person will probably have a 14-inch fist. <laughs> like, so this is pretty much just to give everybody a different perspective of who I am on top of all the different kinds of music I make and expressions sonically that I make. This is more of a dive into my brain. And the fun thing is, like the first one, I'm staring right into a corner. I have nothing to look at. I'm literally just running out of my brain and just letting this out. So it's a form of meditation for me. It's a form of communication with y'all. And the selfish parts of making music is... The one thing that every person really wants is to be immortal and live forever and see the future, you know? So music was one of those things that I realized when I was like 17 that, oh shit, if I, if I died right now, I would live forever, you know? With everybody that are that around me that knew me or listened to me, they would keep me alive, you know? And... Like I said, not everybody listens. To, sometimes people just want to talk. And that's what this is. This is for everyone who knew me, maybe wanted to get to know me, maybe never got a chance to. Maybe this is 25 years from now and I'm some in, on Saturn, you know, on not Saturn, Mars, whatever they're doing. And I'm the music produ- the main music producer over there. <laughs> or maybe I die tonight or tomorrow morning and this will be very crucial, you know? I'm looking at things like that. And that's how I live every day. Not, not like every second could be your last, so chug all that vodka in the bottle. But really taking every single drop and ounce of things in whether it be love or deception whether it be some tasty food or something that burns your mouth off you know that's that's kind of where I am in life right now and as far as that that goes in life I guess that does transition into why I'm not the past month and I say month the past month I haven't made much music because I for those who do know I make at this point in my life, I've made a lot. Like I said, I've I'm I'm sitting on a lot of albums and like but this is the thing. I think a lot of me I'm not the only musician. This is a hundred percent of musicians, you have never heard ninety percent of their music. And I guarantee you that eighty percent of that ninety is better than everything you've heard. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. Because it was that person. That's the weird thing with mainstream that I have a problem with. That We're not making people better people. And this is a thing I... A convo I had with the singer in my band. Like... When I joined the band... I've been, I've been in a band for about three years now. And I'm a rapper first. So I've... I've done ciphers and dealing with other musicians and making music with other rappers. It's it's not the same in a band because I'm just the drummer in the band. So it's it's a very, 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 very different dynamic of how how things cre- how things get created. Period. So. As I'm drumming in practices, I'll be sitting there because I have um, numbers and melodies playing in my head and what I hear as I'm drumming. So meaning if they don't do something that I kind of hear, then I'll just be a pocket drummer. But if they do something where I hear something could be done, but it's their version of it, then I add the spice into that specific spot as far as an accent goes. Like, for instance, one, two, three, four. If the guitarist goes one, two, two, three, two, like in between the two and the three and the four, then I will hit something lightly or hard depending on 
the vibe. You know what I mean? So what I'm basically saying is it's 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 so different, dude. It really is. I completely I I really do enjoy all versions of music. But there's something about being in a band that it's so difficult that I did not expect. I really didn't. I thought that it was just going to be the four musicians, whatever instrument they're on, not arguing or saying anything about anything, just doing it, you know? But, yeah, but erase all of that. What what I was originally saying was I thought that joining a band was about making each other just play their instruments better and be better musicians and be a better band. And I completely forgot why, like I said, I make music in the first place is to link with people and smile and laugh and dance. And we shouldn't have been trying to make each other better musicians. We should have been trying to make each other better people. And that's when I said that about a a month and a half, two months ago, kind of my whole outlook on music itself changed and... Wow, actually saying this now, it actually makes a lot of sense why I haven't had any urge to make music because erase the fact that I'm sitting on a lot of music, I erased all of it. Like I imagined a life where I made no music and I looked at everyone around me and I realized that like I'm pretty much alone and I realized that everyone else is too, like it's actually really sad (laughs) and I don't think that only carries into music. I think that carries into a lot of entertainment, the different branches of entertainment. But like I said, I think that's one of the reasons I'm really doing this right now. Just essentially talking into my, I love that voice crack, essentially just talking into the corner of my room. This is actually the exact spot I record all of my music at as well. I'm in my bedroom. But I think I want I want people to understand understand me on a personal level, not from tweets, not from Facebook statuses from 2012 and who was tagged in this and I want people to I knew that kid, you know, whether I make it or I'm not. I want people to say They're going to have the time eventually. You know, everyone will have that time to say, hey, who was he for real? And that first episode I did, which was yesterday or two days ago, and this one, I think these will help a lot. I think this will. It's one thing I can just do and not worry about views. And I don't worry about views as a musician because I don't I don't even really promo my music. It's weird, like. I'll play it on my Instagram story and I'll play it here and there for like two days, but that's when I make it. And I wind up not dropping it until eight months later. And it's not that I don't have the feeling. It's just that I'm a person. I'm, I'm only me. I'm not trying to, I don't want people who follow me to think that I'm a spamming artist, you know, but at the same time, I don't really have much other help promoting my music. And that ties into all of it, the band and all of it. So it's 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 just really weird. It's really weird nowadays too, especially with algorithms and just clout chasers and things. But what I don't want to do is this right now. Talk very sad and make this a very sad podcast. So I just wanted to set, fill you all in on why I think I'm actually psychologically doing this because I think I ended the first one by myself like this. So it's only right that I start this one like this to fill you all in on really where I am mentally as a person. But yeah, so that being said, I'll probably say something about my music every time that I'm on here because I probably make something new, but 
I actually did finish mastering one of my albums today because I'm I'm sitting on 12 albums, but about four or five of them are mixed and mastered. For people who don't know what that means, it means making them sound like, yes, you know, making them worthy for your ears. So I still have about six albums that I got to go in with a fresh ear and mix down and completely finish. But today I finished one of them and it was the Acoustic John. And it's fucking beautiful. It really is. And the way that this was created, excuse me, the guitarist of my band, excuse me again, Dara, the singer of The Only Way, (laughs) he broke his elbow skateboarding. So I got to keep a hold of his acoustic guitar for a few weeks, and I just recorded me playing some random licks. Shout out to Angelo. He laid a few licks down, a solo in one of them, but... I just recorded a few licks and looped them and did the fucking hip hop thing to it. Added some synths and solos and pianos and shit and boom, got my fucking album called Crossroads, my first acoustic album. And it it feels really good. It was right around May time, May 2019, right before I put the air conditioner in the window that I talked about on the first one. So all the rain, all that in the background you think is a vinyl you think is this fire nah it's rain it's genuine rain right next to my window to the wall that I'm speaking into right now all the sounds you hear are my snaps my claps my hi-hats are like it's literally acoustic from everything in my bedroom so I'm really excited to drop that one I have a lot of singles I'm coming out with too but um Like I said, that's besides the point. That pretty much might just give you all a time reference of literally where I am in life right now. But what I want to talk about when I'm on here is just stuff, you know? Like anything. Like, for instance, today. This will help you all with the reference of the date, too, because I don't know what day it is. Fucking Carmelo Anthony said some dumb shit. Said the most fucking ridiculous shit on Sports Center. He said, if I had teams like LeBron, I would have won a championship. Just think about it. You're talking about Carmelo, right? Carmelo in his prime. Braids Carmelo had Allen Iverson prime. With a supporting cast of Kenyon Martin and and J.R. Smith as a young bull doing 360 dunks and shit at that time. Like, nah, you had the team. You went to New York when Amari Stoudemire was Amari. Like, you had teams, bro. Don't ever, ever try to fucking compare yourself to LeBron on that legacy shit. Nah. Nope. Nope. And this is the thing, back in the day, you were like, (laughs) you were, I mean, no one was Ja Rule, but you were Eminem or Ja Rule. You were fucking uh, LeBron or Carmelo. You had those motherfuckers. You remember those string backpacks? The the Mello and the LeBron string backpacks? And they were legit. They were like jerseys, but they were the Nike bags. You were either Mello or LeBron. Now, my favorite color was baby blue. I hated maroon. That Cleveland Cavalier shit. But I rock the Cleveland John. Like, because it's fucking LeBron. If LeBron had AI then, what? What? First of all, AI took the worst team in history to the finals. LeBron took the second worst team in history to the finals. And you had AI, the number one who took the worst team to the finals, two years after he did it. I don't give a fuck about the practice shit. It goes into the brain of the person. Who they think they are versus what they are. You know how everybody's like, who do you think you are? They're usually saying that to motherfuckers who don't know who the fuck they are or who they're talking to. Carmelo, who the fuck do you think you are, dude? Wait. 
Weren't you just on a team with Russell Westbrook and Paul George? Weren't you just on a team with the Rockets? With fucking James Harden and Chris Paul? You lasted 10 days and you're going to go, oh my, on the media and say it's not your fault? Dude, look at history. Look at everything. And talking about being a team player and shit like that. You didn't have the team? Bitch, because you're not a team player. Let's bring up a fact right now. The one thing I do have is a, a Google Google laptop right next to me, you know, just for stats. And I think this, I, I saw this earlier today. And I'm not going to say it until this is, until I pull this up right now. But if this is true then everything I just said right there is suck a dick, you know? Oh, get the fuck! You averaged three assists in your career. Do you know how many possessions, offensive possessions there are in a game? Do you know... Carmelo Anthony, the scorer, how many times he touches the ball offensively a game? And he averaged three, not 3.1 or that weird half shit that they do with stats. He literally averaged three assists per game. And... (sighs) That shit made me so mad, bro. And I'm actually very happy they brought you on ESPN to make you look like the fucking fool right now. Because guess what? It's what you are. It's who you are. You're a fucking asshole. For all that shit you said on that channel today, dude. Your ego took over reality. The things you said... Just by saying I didn't have a team like Dwayne Wade has? is saying fuck Dwayne Wade. Let me ask you this. Why did you ride the bench on the USA team? Hmm? You fucking dick. Oh, you're such a cornball. Shouldn't have bet your fucking shit on a video game and cut your braids. You shouldn't have fucked with Lala. You shouldn't have done... That's fucked up. I shouldn't have said that. But hey... I shouldn't have said it. You shouldn't have said that. Happens. Ah, Should have stayed number 15. (laughs) Straight up. Should have kept the braids though. Because like. I don't know if you gained 30 pounds. Or if the the haircut made you look like you gained 30 pounds. But after you cut your hair bro. You were done so. And you had a fucking team. You had several teams. I don't give a fuck about the other teams because you had the teams. And like, I don't want to hear shit about injuries and stuff because that's a part of the game. For instance, Kawhi won this year. Yeah, Warriors got hurt, blah, blah. But hey, Kawhi won. If he didn't hit that shot against my Sixers, then we would have been there. And if those injuries happened, we would have won, you know, but we wouldn't get no respect, but it's Kawhi, you know? So like, there's all these double standards of shit. Carmelo, you've had this double standard your whole career. Nah, time's up. You ain't getting no farewell. Paul Pierce could have got a farewell, but he went about it wrong. You know, Paul Pierce should have totally got a farewell. He was fucking that shit up until his last game. Motherfuckers just choose people to troll, you know? Sometimes they just troll people because they look weird. Sometimes they just troll people because of how they are. Maybe they're just pieces of shit, you know? Oh, that's the thing. I get everything that someone does, but, like, if you're just a goofy-looking person, like, if you just look goofy and you don't acknowledge or, like, take that, you know, then, then you're just a pompous dick, you know? And then you're going to be, like, not taking jokes well. And, you know, jokes are to clear awkward situations. The only thing to make things not awkward is to talk about the awkward thing, you know? 
So if I meet a person who's like, I'm not talking about disabilities, guys. I'm talking about a fucking person who's just fucking conversation wise can't hold a convo or some other shit. And I call it out on it or like as far as like an accent or saying some weird shit. And I mimic it in a goofy way. About 50% of people get offended. And hey, I just want to say, uh, stop. You know? Because it's, it's a lighthearted thing. And it's not meant to hurt your feelings. It's literally to let you know, like, my world is this. But when you come around, it's that. You know? And when they come around, it's that. And I just want you guys to know that that's that. You know? Because I'm basically saying I enjoy it. I'm like, you know how people, when they hear a funny line in a movie or something, they never repeat, he said, ha ha, like this. That's kind of what it is. I'm repeating the comedy in my real life. So it's never me making fun or mimicking you. It's me saying it out loud to remind myself, like, oh shit, that was great. You know? It's never like, Anything I do. See, that's a weird thing. People's intentions. It's My intentions are never to ever hurt anybody. You know? And I think a lot of people feel that way. But it comes, it comes out that way. That's why communication is important. That's why I'm talking like this right now. Because regardless of the songs you've heard or stories you've heard, maybe listening to this will help you understand that I'm just a fucking person trying to figure this shit out. And I never will. (laughs) And none of us will. None of us are ever going to really understand this shit. Unless that stem cell shit starts happening. Like, if I started taking mad stem cell treatment, I probably would... It would slow down my aging, but it's not like I could reverse my aging. When I turn 70, no matter how good the technology is, I won't be able to step back or live longer. It'll be a weird thing. Mm. I've lived on this street with Before it turns down that end and this end, got to be a hundred houses on each side. I don't know one of them. I don't think I've ever spoken. I've maybe seen two or three of them. So when you talk about a community, there aren't any. There's none. Now, I'm a motherfucker that likes my privacy, so I don't even... I want my crib to be like an acre away from the next house. I don't I want my own backyard, my own little wilderness, you know? But it is really weird how I know some people are nosy and stuff, but how I don't know anybody on this street. Not even on some mowing the lawn, hey, how are you doing? type stuff. And I live down the beach in New Jersey. Ocean City, not Ocean City, but I'm not telling you motherfuckers, but I'm around there. Ocean City, Atlantic City, that shit. Shit's just weird, and I know it's not only like that here, it's definitely like that in Hollywood. It's definitely like that everywhere. And it was like that before we had phones and stuff. So, there's always been like this... Major disconnect in society. That again is why I make music. Because it's the one spot people go to do nothing but connect. And talk to people. And listen to what people are saying and playing. Because everywhere everywhere else. I mean music industry is fake. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going into that part today. But every conversation with people is you go to the register, hello, how are you doing today? That's usually not that person, you know. They're just smiling because they're working and they need to make the company look good and make that money. Same thing with strippers, dude. They don't like you, bud. <laughs> they, they don't like you, man. And that's 
just walking by people you don't know. There's no conversation. For the exception of motherfuckers like me. And if I'm just walking, though, I'm not going to just talk to everybody, you know? I'm going to just... I actually tend to keep to myself, but this is what I'm saying, the root of it. I don't want to. I kind of want to talk to everybody and see who they are, what they like to eat, what, you know, everyone smells different too. Everyone has a gnarly smell, (laughs) but I want to, I want to meet everyone, you know, I want to hear what everyone thinks. I want to see what their perspective is on things. I want to, because there's not a left and right. The shit is not left and right. There's all all the fucking directions, whatever it's called. There's all that. So I would love to love to have motherfuckers that would just sit and talk. Cuz like podcasts and stuff, you see people sitting and talking and these help these help communication in how you talk. How you realize like if you if you do one with someone and you listen back, you realize how much you cut someone off or how much you forget what you were going to say or, you know, things like that. But music, you get people together, it's music. You say thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Like that's what events are. Cyphers is the same. The rapping, we leave parties. You talk to some people, but they're not meetings. They're not like... Like assemblies in school, like how people have to do jury duty. Like we should all like, because we want to, not a mandatory thing. Like this group of this town meet at this weekend and this group of this town, not man. We should all want to, you know, we should all want to talk to each other and expand because like when you break this shit down 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 like how else are we not all brothers and sisters how else are we not from a single celled organism to to whatever the fuck an ostrich being made like that shit's none of us are ever going to be able to understand the shit we do understand now that solar power, uh, windmills and ocean currents and shit like that can run the power for the world. Clean water everywhere. Oil. None. We don't need that shit at all. Fossil fuel? Foss- like, like fossil fuel. Like, like fossils? That's what we're using? Dude, we got the fucking sun. <laughs> like, and on top of that, if that's the case, then that's the world generating its own power, which means what? Everyone will have electricity and power everywhere, no matter what. Which means what? A society of people who aren't homeless. A society of places people can go to live. And what? With all that free time that they're jobless and homeless doing. Fucking creating and innovating like humans should be doing. We should not be working five, six days a week, nine to six, five, to live for two days a week. 52 weeks, right? Seven days each, right? Two. 500. Dude, that's... That's a hundred fucking days of relaxing if you're lucky. That's not even... Bro. None of us have to really... Worry about lions or fossils like T-Rexes. <laughs> None of us have to. We shouldn't have to. Now, I understand a, a hippie complex where people could think everybody just sitting around doing nothing. Dude, you think – do you think we're all just going to sit? Like, nah. I don't even like being crowds of people and I'm a musician. Like, I – the, the thing I'm saying is I – no, not me because I do this. 
everybody else who wants to. Everybody's depressed, dude. And that's not just this generation. I think as humans, we're all depressed because we realize that death is inevitable. I think that's the thing. And religion is for a lot of people. That's that's a thing where people can hold on to. And it's like, okay, death isn't it. If I'm a good person, I, you know... So there's these games we play with each other. We don't even have to we don't have to play games, dude. No games. Fuck that. No one knows if if we die right now, if we come back. No one knows in reality. So what we do know is we need sun. We need water. We love laughter. We hate pain. What the fuck are we doing? Seriously. I understand different languages have Hello, my. How are you doing? And uh, what are you doing over here? The, like, like, uh, what are you doing, man? You know, like there's. What are you doing? You like there's. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck accents I'm doing, but you see what I mean. Like, you could say "What are you doing?" in different languages, and it'll come across aggressive, just because of the language. So miscommunication is the main thing, but the the one thing, but the main thing is no communication. And this is with everyone, dude. Dude, we're humans. If you're gay or not, you like to fuck. If you're vegan or not, you like to eat. We need water. (laughs) Everything else is fucking bullshit. So that's where these conspiracies about the, the people running shit and the rich people and money isn't even real. And that's where those conspiracies come in. Like, are they building a secret quote-unquote stronger human society to keep the population going and because like if you think wars have stopped so like we haven't had a major death war like hundreds of thousands of millions of people dying in about 60 years and our population is not slowing down in the world bro people are fucking and people are watching people fuck everywhere so unless we really fix this shit as far as energy and resources and that's the thing too like apparent like fuck global warming and all that shit bro like all that shit like solar panels bro electric cars shit like that like when i see some of the construction in this fucking country it makes me sick If you drive down in New Jersey, you'll have one town with brand new homes, one town with houses from 1920, 1900, straight up, 100 years old. Then you'll go to places, oh my God. (laughs) Then you'll go to places and fucking like, uh, dude, Philly or any city where AC... They're just on, like, on top of each other, like, bro, you could have made the fucking ceiling 12 feet. You really could have. You didn't have to make the ceiling 7, 8 feet. We're humans, dude. We're smart, logical. We're aware. Like I said, none of us like pain, unless it's a sexual thing. We all want love. We all want to eat good, whether you're vegan or that. Like, we all want the same, and not everyone, not musicians, not athletes, not politics. We all want the same thing. We want to smile and laugh. So I play this shit out of my head a couple times, a, a utopia where everyone got what they want. So this is what fucks me up a little bit psychologically. Everything I just said... Play this out real quick. Say you wake up, right? You have everything. Meaning you don't have to work. You like you don't even have to walk out of your room type shit to get what you want. Say I want Chick-fil-A right now. Boom, it's there. Say you have everything you want. No matter what it... I'm literally every single thing. You wanted to be 6'4". You wanted a beard. You wanted... This girl, you wanted that girl to be like that. Like, 
I'm saying as a human, you literally had everything. All right? Imagine it. Now imagine a neighbor with everything he wanted. Yeah. You're going to be like, oh, shit. I should have got that grill. I should have had dolphins in the under thing, like undercarriage of my pool. Like, <laughs> so jealousy and envy is a human trait. That's definitely a reality. So everything I said about everybody having what we want, a utopia, that hippieville, whatever you want to call it, no matter what, we would still want more. So now being aware of that as a human, you got to break that down. Well, okay, then we need to keep this door circular. We need to communicate. We need to talk to each other. We need to see what he wants, see what she wants, see what they want, see what I want, and then make it a reality. But at the same time, we'll have other versions of what we wanted. Oh, I'm I'm out of this routine. Oh, you should try this. That's what I mean about the conversations with my neighbors. I have a hundred neighbors, literally. I could walk for five minutes I could walk and knock on a hundred doors. And I don't know any of them. Their names, who they are, where they're from, what they do, what they want. Fuck what they what do you want in life? I don't know what any of them want. If I don't know what they want, how can I help and give it to them? Jeez, this world is fucked up, yo. I break things down psychologically, like, a lot. Like, I'm talking, like, break, 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 break down. Because, like I said, you all definitely just imagined your utopia. But but your utopia next to someone else's utopia. You'll be like, holy shit. (laughs) Like, you're either going to hate it or you're going to love it. You're going to want it or you're going to want to get rid of it. So breaking that down from this aspect of already having everything you wanted, that just shows the character of of the human itself. But if we're aware of these things, we can avoid them. Not avoid them, work around them. Not No, not work around them. That's not the wording I want. Like, we can fix them. We can eat. We can literally mentally evolve people and generations. Right now, everything is so dumbed down. Sitcoms, don't get me fucking started on the music that they play on the mainstream. Now, I know a lot of people don't listen to the radio a lot, but a lot of people do. I don't. I'm a musician. Haven't listened to radio since I was 16. But everyone else does. And that's all they hear. When people put on TV, that's all they see. Even a lot of Netflix and all that shit, it's like it's turning into bullshit. The only time something is pure is like right in the beginning for some reason. I don't, I don't know what to do, man. Like, hmm, excuse me. It seems like as a human, there comes a point in your life where you realize like, You have to play the game. And the game being... Meaning being an asshole. Being selfish. And that's how I started this shit. Uh, Being a musician is a selfish thing. It's like... You want to be immortal. You want people to recognize you. And you want to connect with them though. That's the thing. The underlying reason is to not be alone. And to not take it out on people when you're not alone. Because it's already gone. It's already out in music. And what a lot of people don't realize is... Even the negative songs that you hear from musicians... When you really pay attention... Sometimes the wording or the melody or... Something will lighten it up. Basically showing the positive sign of it. 
side of it. So if I just broke up with a girlfriend or like it's not going to usually be fuck you, you killed me, da da. It's it's probably going to be like you should still be mine. Like the reality of the situation. I'm, I'm never going to shy away from how I really feel. And a lot of people get their feelings hurt. And it's not just today. It's always been this, this PC culture, whatever people are trying to call it. Like everyone gets so offended. I don't even think people were really offended. I think they're like, I think they're trolls. Honestly, people who act offended online, they get a rise out of everybody about the fact that they were even offended. You know, everybody's like, how can you even be offended about this? You know? When at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. It really doesn't. If the person was offended or not. If the person's mad that you don't know that they were offended or not. It doesn't matter. How about every time you guys get in an argument. Don't say stop. Don't say let's not. Because that's aggressive. That's passive aggressive. There's got to be a statement that we can make. Just a hashtag statement. Pound sign statement. And when you say that, it lets the person know, I love you and I really don't care about the bullshit. I just want to connect with you. Hashtag. Fuck it, Mrs. Pac-Man. No, because that's too gendered fucking shit. <laughs> Hashtag secret. Because it's the truth. Hmm. Hmm. It's a weird thing, guys. Life. I'll never understand it. Sure as hell never going to understand death. Mm. I didn't mean for this <laughs> this one to be super like venti, you know, but I guess this is what was on my mind and that's what these are about. These are to let you know who I am when I am that, you know. About to take a little sip real quick. Anybody who knows Double Cup Buggy knows what I'm sipping on right now. She is. Let's talk about this. I don't know about you guys. How you drink your stuff. They call me double cup buggy because one of my cups is always a chaser. I'm not drinking unless I have a chaser. I can't stand motherfuckers who go, I'll need a chaser. Bitch, yes you do. You don't have to act like... To me, at least. You don't have to act like you're not drinking poison. You don't have to act like it doesn't taste like chemicals. <laughs> you know? So the reason I stay away from beer and um, wine. Oh, wine sucks, dude. Ugh. Because that's the amount of the liquid. One shot, one sip is one full beer. So that's the amount of liquid. So as far as shots go, if I drank beer's worth of shots, donezo. It's probably like 20 shots. I've definitely done it. But um, so that's my philosophy behind it. I don't drink beer for the taste. Taste terrible. I don't taste or drink wine ever because that tastes even fucking worse, you know? And... Like I said, vodka, whiskey, that tastes worse, worse than all those. But the thing about that is it gets you drunk. And that's why you're drinking, right? Because I'm not, like I said, I'm not drinking beer because it tastes like chocolate milk. Like, that's the thing. So I hate when, I hate when guys think they're tough because they do that. Like, dude, no, just make it easier on yourself. I have a chaser. I have... Dude, ice too. Ice. Like, I need my shit on ice. 
I need my vodka, anything. I need it in the ice. I need it cold. You're going to, you're going to, are you trying to make me go? <sighs> nope. If I'm at a bar, I'll chase a, I'll chase a hot shot with a cold beer at a bar. If I'm at a bar, like I'll do things like that. But if I have control over what I'm drinking, I'm drinking something that tastes good. <laughs> so what I do is I have a one cup full of ice with vodka or whiskey or whatever. And I have one cup full of apple juice, iced tea, soda, whatever, whatever I'm chasing with, you know. And when you do it like that and you take a shot and you rinse it down right away. Dude, it's it's like you didn't even drink, you know. So then before you know it, a minute later, you take another shot. You know, two minutes later, you take another shot. Before you knew it, in ten minutes, you drank fucking eight shots, which is an eight-pack of beer. And then you don't have to drink for the next two fucking hours because you're in that euphoric tips. This is true alcoholic talking right now. <laughs> but there's a moment when you're drunk. It's called tipsy. That's what people call it. But there's a... It's not a euphoric statement, but that tipsy spot, that's the spot people love of being drunk. You don't want to get drunk. You want to get tipsy and you want to stay there. So when you drink a little bit, but quick, you hit that tipsy spot and you can pretty much coast that for the next hour, even two. And you're like, wait, I haven't had a drink in a little bit. And then you take one more and then you realize... Oh, this is poison. I don't even need to drink the rest of the night. But you're you're in that social what's up, dude, mood, you know? Because it's it's hard to be around people getting fucking drunk. And I'm a musician, so I'm like just at concerts and shows and people who are talking to me constantly who are wasted. And I'm really irritable when I'm sober. Like, I'm talking no weed. If I have weed, it's fine. Like, what up, dude? Whatever. But I'm just... That's the thing, too. I think a lot of people don't... Have never experienced a lifestyle of just being a stoner. Of just... Enjoying what you do. I'm not talking about drinking at this point. Right now, I'm talking about smoking. Like... When I don't smoke, first of all... I... Don't have an appetite. Like, I don't eat at all. I'm very more attentive to get shit done, but I'm... I'm way more angry. Like, I'm way more quick on the toes to just jump on something. And I think I'd probably be, probably be in the military or some shit if I never smoked in my life. For that sense of... Ten, huh, do, sh, do, sh, do. And I think that's what a lot of people have. And it's really scary when you think about it. Like, we sh- I'm not saying everybody should smoke weed and do, like, do drugs and shit. But, but dude, like, when I took acid the first time, I was 16 years old. That shit changed my life, dude. I really saw shit. I was, I would say at that moment, I was a fucking, I don't even think, I wasn't even a caterpillar, yo. I was not even born. Fuck having me in the cocoon and blooming into a butterfly when I took acid. Nah, I wasn't even born yet. When I took acid, I woke the fuck up. Like, 16 years old. Two hits of liquid acid, playing Guitar Hero. Oh, should I tell this story? What do I got? I got. (laughs) All right, I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm 28 years old. Shit, I'm 27. I'm about to be 28 in a week, bro. Yeah, I'm at a point in life where I just want people to fucking know me now. Musically, I wanted people to know me before and connect, but now I want... I want a real hug. I don't want a hug because I'm a good rapper or I drummed really good that night. I want a hug because people understand me. And that's what that podcast, this whole podcast scene has showed me the past two years. Like, I really, and I don't listen to music. When I'm working out, when I'm doing shit and not making music, I'm only listening to podcasts. 
So that shit really made me understand, like, I don't give a fuck about, like, I do, but I don't give a fuck about, like, Joe Rogan's stand-up because I know I have him as a person that I can listen to constantly. And he's just an example. Eric Griffin, Bobby Lee, Chris D'Elia, all those motherfuckers. And the thing is, they're all fucking friends, dude. They're all, they all been doing this shit together for a long time. And that's what a lot of people are just starting to realize. And if they don't, they're just, like, podcasts are still just catching on. But what I was saying, though, the meat and the potatoes. I'm going to tell this story right now. And I don't know if my sister, well, I have two sisters, my oldest sister. I don't know if she listens to anything I do. I don't know if my mama, she doesn't. She will, though. That's what I mean. If I If I happen to do some, not some dumb shit, if I just happen to go, in my sleep or something, at least they have something they can listen back to and understand me more. But (laughs) this is great. (laughs) So my sister's a hairdresser, right? And I used to get my hair cut by her when I was a kid. And I I used to have that white boy tidal wave in the front of my head. Like it'd be spiked up in the front and the rest would be come down, you know. So I needed my hair a specific way. This fucking day, shout out to my brother, Marco Bernardino. Doesn't matter, don't worry, you won't lose your job. Hopefully this actually makes you fucking money. But, um, he was like my one friend. Him and Keith were my only two friends that listened to, like, disco biscuits and jam bands and talented musicians. At that time, when I was 16, I only listened to rap. Like, I strictly thought anybody who listened to rock music was racist. And I didn't consider jam bands rock bands. <laughs> like, uh, Disco Biscuits, I would not consider um, ACDC or something like that. Not saying I thought they were, but that was just an example. But I've been smoking weed. I started smoking weed when I was 12 years old. And I turned 13 that summer. I was a freshman when I was 13. I graduated when I was 17. I was a young bull. But but that summer going into freshman year is when I started smoking weed. So that actually... Because I was... This story is actually going to take a nice little hump real quick. In seventh grade, I was prescribed Adderall. Because... I just wouldn't do homework. So from 7th to 8th grade, I was a robot. Straight A's. No appetite, though. Didn't eat anything. Didn't talk to people. Like, it was really, really weird. I just remember not sleeping much and not talking much. And rarely eating. 8th grade, that stopped. Grades went back to a C. But I was kind of a normal kid again. But in eighth grade, that's that's eighth grade, dude. Like that's when shit starts. <laughs> as a as a girls are already three feet taller than you then. But once you hit twelve years old, and keep in mind everybody in eighth grade was already thirteen. I was I just turned twelve. So like my shit was a little a year. Like that's why when you when you hear about a kid who gets in a fight in sixth grade. He's like, he's two grades older than me. Because those are drastic years. Those are, that 12 to 14 as a boy, dude, nah, it's it's like, it's 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 a man. You know, it's pretty much a baby man, if that makes sense. But I remember, I'm not going to say his name. He knows who he is, though. I bought my first, my first solo bag of weed with my lunch money. And it smelled bad. And it was it was good, good weed. So my first batch of weed that I smoked alone was really, really good weed. But um, I bought it, left it in my locker. Was too scared to bring it home, so I left it in my locker for fucking week. Middle school locker. Marlton, New Jersey. I left a gram of stanky-ass weed in there in like 2003 for a week. That's the most sketchiest shit you could ever do. 
And then I realized, oh, shit, <laughs> school's over. So I had to bring it home. And I brought it home, and I had, I didn't know where to hide it. And I had, um, do you guys remember those little things where you stretch them out and you, like, you squeeze their faces and, like, this shit comes out of their mouth, you know, like this chippy ball? I hid the weed in his mouth on the first day, like, getting home from school. So... All summer goes by and it was it was the same as every other summer in my life like it sucked. It was I was just a kid in the suburbs with nothing to do, nothing to learn that I wanted to learn. No you know and I this is I know that the whole country is like this. I know that all the kids in the world don't fucking know what they want to do. Not to mention I'm the generation of the cell phone. So, like, seventh grade, I had a fake phone. By ninth grade, I was the only kid with a fake phone, and everybody had a phone. Like, technology really, really changed a lot of shit real quick. But we'll lead into that. But, um, but yeah, so that we just stayed in my fucking thing. Halfway through summer, realized we weren't doing shit. I was hanging out with these two kids, Alan and David. And... They were like, I wish we had some weed. I was like, oh, you smoked weed before? They were like, yeah. Like, they were just my friends in the neighborhood, you know? Like, we weren't doing bad shit. We were just doing shit we thought were bad. Like, ding-dong ditch type shit. And (coughs) I said, I have a gram of hydro. And they were like, what? And I was like, yeah. And I ran upstairs. Grabbed it out the fucking screamo guy's mouth. We rolled a tinny. And it's not like a a pipe tinny. Like we broke the weed up and rolled the tinny like a cigar. So every time we hit it, we had to rip off the end of it. And it basically turned into a tinny roach. (laughs) But before this, I have smoked one time in my life before this, but I didn't get stoned. I acted stoned. I didn't know how to inhale couple months after i learned how to inhale i stole some cigarettes from my sisters stole a cigarette from her my other sister and my mom i got all the different flavors didn't like none of it cigarettes nope terrible didn't get me high i i right then and there i was like as a kid i was like they're doing these for a reason like it's taking stress away it's doing something and when i hit the cigarette it was just like whoa they are killing themselves Like, straight up. So, cigarettes was just instantly, nah. But, we didn't do that. We didn't hurt me like the cigarette did. The first time I smoked it, but it didn't get me stoned either. So, I wasn't scared of it. I hit this fucking weed, bro. I ate chocolate sandwiches for the next three days. (laughs) I took a piece of white bread... Two piece of Hershey's, threw that white bread in the microwave for 30 seconds, closed it, and ate it. And remembering it, it's definitely... T- Dude, my my boy would take... My mom was fucking awesome. She would have this one jar filled with candy. But like M&M's or gummy bears, and it would always be something different. And my boy... <laughs> Because we it was just after school and we had like shit, random shit to make and eat. And keep in mind, I'd never had an appetite like in my whole life until this point. Like I, it, it was it was a bitch to get me to eat anything. And this kid poured a bowl of applesauce and poured the gummy bears in it. And God damn, that shit was fucking good. Gummy bear applesauce and Hershey sandwiches. I ate that all summer. (laughs) That's what I ate. I tried to add peanut butter a few times. Nah, I was always an extra jelly guy. Extra jelly and shit. But but I said that to pretense and to like, that's how I started my like psychological shit as far as marijuana and all that goes. That was freshman year. Back to the main thing. When I hit acid, for the first time, I was a sophomore. So it was a year after this. Two years after this. 13, 40, yeah, 40. So I was like towards the end of my sophomore years. Like the end of it. And 
the dude that I got weed from said he didn't have weed, but he had acid. And when he told me that, I hit up my boy and I was like, yo, I know you've done this before. I think I'm ready, you know. And he just reassured me that I was and that he would take care of me. So we got it. And this is where my sister's part comes in. I, for, as a kid, I didn't know what that shit was going to do. I thought it was going to be like being stoned, being able to, being able to hide it, you know, being able to go home and go to sleep. At this point, I don't think I, I never drank at this point either. I never drank alcohol. Because I knew when I turned 18 and shit, like, alcohol was just going to be everywhere. So I kind of made it a point as a kid to never drink alcohol. I experimented with a pill one or here one time, but I didn't like it. Like, that scared the shit out of me. When I woke up the next day and didn't remember anything, all I had done was played video games. But when I woke up and didn't remember anything, it scared the fucking shit out of me. And I was not cool with that. So pills were never cool with me. I'm talking about opiates and shit. But, um... So, I got it. (laughs) My boy came over. And I forgot that when he came over that my oldest sister had planned to cut my hair that day. Now, keep in mind, I'm a sophomore in high school. So I'm like 14 years old. Oh, shit. So I was younger than I even thought I was. Wow, I thought I was 16. I was 13 or 14 when I took acid. Well, it happens and it happened. But I forgot that she was supposed to cut my hair. So I was just hanging out with my buddy and we were playing Guitar Hero. Okay, knock on the big door and Brandon, come get your hair cut. And I just looked at my boy like, oh. And he knows my sister like he knows my oldest sister is not one to play with. My oldest sister is more like a mama. My middle sister is my my homie, you know. And we were just like, oh, shit. And we had just taken it like 20, 30 minutes before two hits of liquid acid at age 13 or 14. And I was like, I can't like we're playing we're playing guitar here. I can't (laughs) say no. I can't hide in my room. So I was like, all right, just stay here, play this. I'll come back, you know? Went downstairs. (laughs) I go to sit in the chair. And a lot of guys will know this. When you get your head buzzed, sometimes there's a random tickle that happens in your spine. Like when when the buzzer hits the back of your head and you can't not move your back, you know? So my sister cut my hair my whole life. I did that as a little kid. The past two or three years of my life, I wasn't doing that little back shimmy. You know what I mean? Because I kind of, I guess I grew out of it. Second, I, I, I didn't see any visuals, nothing with anything. Second, I sat in the chair in the kitchen. I saw my mom's boyfriend move the fire and my shit, dude, the fire, I it didn't come out into the living room, obviously, but, and I didn't think it did. I was just like, in my brain, whoa. Like, so I think the fact that I had to keep it under wraps the first very second that I started tripping really hard is the fact that I can handle it, period, at any dose. Like, I've never had a bad trip, but. I think those are all obviously psychological depending on what you think about. So I could have freaked the fuck out right there, but I didn't. You know, I was just like, at that moment, I was like, oh, this is not weed. (laughs) This is not a thing to go to sleep. This is not anything. You know, this is, I have to act right now. So I acted like me. And if you if you meet a person who you know trying to act like themselves, it's a very weird thing. It's very scary, actually. But they didn't know, obviously. I'm like, and I'm always critiquing my haircut, you know? Like, how my hair... Like, I'm super like, you fucked it up again, you know? And right at the end of the haircut, my back got that tickle. I started getting that tickle again. 
and I moved. And she was like, whoa, what's what's wrong with you? And like when she said that, I thought she meant like, are you on drugs? <laughs> but she meant, whoa, you haven't done that in years. And I was just like, oh, no, I'm good. I don't know why. Do you have a new razor or something? I don't fucking know what I said. Well, she lets me out, right? So <laughs> the thing that makes it weird is, like I said, every time she cuts my hair, there's always something wrong with it. I go in the mirror. I didn't know about this thing when you're tripping face to, like, not look in the mirror. But this is probably the reason I like looking in the mirror because <laughs> when I look. <laughs> I had a haircut and I saw my pupils and I was like, holy shit. I just, the second I looked at myself, I was like, oh my God. Like, oh, I I, I just brought myself back there right now. Like, I literally just remembered it. We all have photographic images in our brain of memories, but like, Ooh, I'm, I just got chills thinking about that moment. I just realized, like, it wasn't like when I saw the flame in the fire and I realized that this is a different drug. I realized right then and there, everything I thought was not, not, not as important, but it just wasn't what I thought it was. I realized right then and there, I'm onto something. You know what I mean? Like, this is different. I should have freaked out about the right side of my hair that she probably messed up like she always used to, but I didn't. So the fact that I didn't definitely laid some suspicion in their eyes a little bit. I didn't mention this, though. The rock band or guitar hero that my buddy's playing upstairs tripping face right now is my sister's. Like, I forgot before I had it, I was borrowing hers. So she didn't only come over to cut my hair. She came to take the rock band. So after my haircut, I go upstairs to check on my boy, play rock band. But I'm as I'm going up, I remember like, oh, shit, she's about to take this. And we're going to have nothing. As kids, as 14, 15-year-old kids, all we did was play rock band and shit. So like after that, what are we going to – it was like 8 o'clock. We had school the next day. Like (laughs) what the fuck are we going to do? It was December too. Like a little bit of snow on the ground, shit like that. He lived in the front of my neighborhood, so – As far as a walk goes, it's like a 15-minute walk a mile away. As a kid, that's not a lot. But so after I realized that I just saw the whole fucking universe in my eyes, they expected me to come out of the bathroom saying, you fucked it up, and I just went upstairs. So I guess they went about what they did, but the second I got to the stairs, that's when I remembered my friend was up there. Like, I completely forgot that Marco was up there. So I like, I crawled up the stairs like a quiet cat, you know, I wanted to peek open in the door to see what he was doing. Oh, it was the funniest fucking shit. I wish I could. Um, Not like flat screen TVs. Like this is before flat screens like this, the, the big TVs, they were good quality, but they were big. But these big TVs didn't have latency that flat screens have. So the guitar hero that you were playing, like when you hit the note, you would hit it. You didn't have to do some latency thing that you had to do on the high def screens, which was a little delay playing the game and it sucked, you know? So like I go up there expecting to hit, but I hear the drum pads being hit. Dude, this kid is standing, not just hitting one pad of the drum, but staring into the screen, the screen of, uh, of the guitar hero. And he was playing tool and in guitar hero, they had, um, they actually brought the faces out that Tool used to do in their live performances and shit. Dude, I could not stop laughing. That was when the laugh hit because it was like an hour and a half, 45 in of the initial dosage. And <laughs> when he looked at me, the way he looked at me is the way I looked at myself in the mirror. And dude... We could not stop laughing for good. I'm talking like could have died laughing. (laughs) Like the most uncontrollable laugh ever. And obviously as 
10, 15 minutes go by of constant laughing. Not making noise, too. Like, we're trying to hide our laughs because we don't want to be seen in the state that we are. Not that there's not a physical thing as far as smell, like alcohol and weed. It's, it's, it's an eye thing. Like, if you look me in the eyes, you would have seen doll's eye. Like, you would have seen all black, all pupil. I was intuitive as fuck. But when they came back up, I thought it was because we were laughing and she was like, no, we need the rock band. And we didn't even get to play it together because we were just laughing so hard. And I was like, oh, fuck. Shit. All right. Well, Marco, let's not be weird. Help me carry it down. And when he helped me carry it down, dude, he lost his shit. As far as insecurity goes, he didn't freak out. He didn't do any of that. Like, they don't know. But he, I saw what was happening to him. And he slowly just crumbled in his brain. <laughs> like, for instance, as we walked the... I was supposed to link with my sister the next day. or Oh, all right. So it was like... It was actually like December 27th because it was about to be New Year's. And I was planning on hanging out with her on New Year's. And she was like, I'll pick you up. And she was talking about like in two days. And Marco was like, wait, what? Like, you're taking me home? Like, in the front of the neighborhood? She was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, what? Like, <laughs> and when he realized she, like, right then kind of caught on to him being fucked up, he was just like, oh, okay, and kind of, like, ran and scr- scrambled in my house. <laughs> and I went and reassured her everything's okay. So now is when I realized oh shit, he's done this more before me, but I'm going to have to be the one in charge, you know? I'm handling this shit very well. Like, I'm well aware of what's what. I'm well aware of, because acid is pretty much phases. Like, you get three phases. You get a whoosh, and then you get a ha, and then you get a whoa. You know, and I was aware of the phases coming, and the phases came in three. And as time went on, they... Uh, slim down so like that first initial wave it's a big wave it's like the tide coming in you know and every other wave is a little less and a little less but it's the same three you know anybody who's tripped knows what i'm talking about but um but i realized that it was he wasn't handling no waves he was <laughs> he was sinking But he lives in my neighborhood, so that's the thing about being on something like that, a hallucinogen. You need to feel safe, whether it's someone you're around or where you're at. Like, I wouldn't have taken it if I wasn't with him. Because I thought that he would have taken care of me. But I actually wound up taking care of him, you know? So... We realize, all right, we I'll walk you home, bro. Like, I'm tripping faces. Like, I don't know how long this is going to last. So we walk out my crib, like, 8 p.m., 14 years old. I'm not allowed to be walking. You know, my neighborhood, these cops don't fucking play. They harass anybody. Anybody. They harass kids. Like, in a town like this, they just harass motherfuckers. And as we're walking, we see, like, this is, the like, the year that those big blow-up snow globes started being popular. Like, the big blow-up snowmen and shit. And there was, like, barely an inch of snow on the ground. So everything was, like, it was so beautiful. Everything was fractal. Like, I understood the construction behind it. Like, how I was saying earlier how New Jersey houses are so ugly and how everybody just lives to, right next to each other but doesn't even know each other. I saw the beauty behind it this moment. You know, a lot of my, I lost a lot of my hate and anguish from this day alone. This day till today, that day still relieves me. So we walk, we're walking. Oh my God, I forgot. That's why it was so long. He didn't live in the front of my neighborhood at this point. He lived in the other neighborhood. So this was like a three-mile walk past the police station in a big, wide suburban town, not like a city where the cop is just – the cop station is just next to the library, which is next to barbershops. It's not like that. So we're (laughs) – Skip past, we walk, we're like right at his house. There's a moment where he thought I was his grandpa. 
and started hysterically crying. And that was the moment. I knew I was handling it well, but that moment I realized, oh, shit. Like, my body can handle these things way different than... Because this, at, at the time, my buddy, he was he was fucking around, you know? He was fucking around with some shit. And, I, and same with my other ones. And I've heard stories about them bugging out. And the fact that I kept my shit together and it just really showed me that, like, oh, shit. Like, not only can I handle it, like, I understand things differently, you know? Fuck the handling part. Fuck the fact that he thought I was his grandpa for a second like how about the fact that if he didn't freak out for that amount of time what he would have he could have manifested positively you know that breaks down into how he was raised the shit he dealt with his neurological balance what his parents did you know like all that shit ties into it that's crazy when you really break that shit down but the story that this started was from was the first time that I ever tripped, and that's pretty much it. We got to his house. He, um, <laughs> I pretty much tucked him in, <laughs> but at that point, I couldn't. I wasn't walking home. I didn't want to sleep there, but I just felt at that point I felt safe. And to be completely honest, I think. Pink Floyd The Wall was like the full live concert was playing on VH1 Classic at that time. And I just let, sat on his couch and then watched it and probably left in the morning. As a kid, I probably got picked up. That's some funny shit, bro. But all that goofy little physical stuff aside, like. I could never begin to explain to you guys what was going on in my brain at that point because as a kid growing up and learning what you learn and realizing essentially like not because of death that none of it matters but because of life that none of it matters. Like all these things we think we're doing, we're not. We're just wasting time we should be experiencing each other's tendencies and not necessarily pain though that's like that's what I mean like everybody has these things and alcoholic parents could turn to an alcoholic kid but what about the kid who's an alcoholic who didn't have alcoholic parents like you can't explain that shit all you can explain is that at the end of the day, we all want to be warm and cuddly. So I think that's a good way to end this one. I talked a little more than I wanted to. I usually want to go for an hour, but I did the acid story, which I'm sure I'll talk about a lot of other times, but there's plenty more acid and shroom stories. But I love you guys. I hope you understand a little more who I am. And if you didn't, maybe it'll happen on the next one. I'll talk to you guys soon. Love you.